Hi, I'm Mario Guerra, and this is Talking Downy with Mario and Eric. What's mm-hmm. happening? Let's talk about Downey, Eric. Well, it's been a, an eventful November in, in Downey, and I think uh, last week is uh, City Council met in a special meeting, and we have our new mayor for 2022. Yeah, it's going to be Blanca Pacheco. That's great. I'm glad. Absolutely, and they also voted for the mayor pro tem, which is going to be Sean Ashton. Wow. So it's going to be that's interesting. Blanca Pacheco, Sean Ashton. Uh, what, what's your initial reaction to that? Well, it's kind of interesting is because uh, uh, Sean Ashton, of course, is termed out, so he'll never be mayor. He'll serve as mayor pro tem. He has one more year. He's got one more year. Mm-hmm. And the same thing happened with Alex Saab a couple of years ago, and they didn't vote him on mayor pro tem, which they should have. He mm-hmm. should have been mayor pro tem there, especially his last year. But the issue is still going to be, who's going to be mayor after Blanca Pacheco? Mm-hmm. So they didn't answer that question. Uh, we're kind of hoping, I think the residents are, that it's not a certain person mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, that <laughs> continues. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think it's, that was an interesting choice in the council voter it, unanimously. It, it, it is. And that's what I'm most interested in, too, in 2023, who's going to be mayor. Right. So let's look at the options. It, it could be... Uh, Claudia Frometa, mm-hmm. assuming she's reelected because right. she's going to yeah. into did, her final year. She did year. a great job this year as mayor. She did. Uh, we also have Mario Trujillo, correct? Catherine and Catherine Alvarez, uh, and we're going to have a new council member, whoever it is that replaces Sean Ashton, correct? So the next mayor, it could be Claudia, right? It could be Mario Trujillo, right. or it could be Catherine Alvarez. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see who the council selects. Right, right. And, and again, that's the one thing is, for everybody to remember, the city charter is very specific. The Downey City Council picks the mayor and the mayor pro tem at all time. You know, you talk about a rotation. It's not really a rotation. They've already, they've already deviated from so-called rotation, if you will. So there's been some guidelines, but the charter is very specific. I always said that when I was on, on the council. It's like, don't ask me to vote and then tell me I have to vote a certain way. Mm-hmm. That's not true. The charter mm-hmm. says this is who votes in the council will. But it's going to be interesting because you know, I think Mario Trujillo would probably like to be mayor his fourth year. Mm-hmm. So there's going to be a one-year gap there that's going to be interesting. And, and God willing, I know the council will do the right choices. They did the good choices. They could have had on this one. They could have had Sean, Claudia, or um, or uh, Catherine. And I think mm-hmm. that they made the wise choice of staying away from Catherine. Mm-hmm. And it could have been Claudia. But So so if, if Mario prefers to be mayor in his fourth year when he's up for re-election, mm-hmm. he would probably be mayor. Mayor Pro Tem next year. Correct. So that would leave either Claudia or Catherine to be mayor again. Right. I would assume the council would probably lean towards Claudia. I'm assuming, I'm just kind of guessing, which would be very interesting because then we would have the situation where we had Blanca as mayor, mm-hmm. what, three three years ago, right. and then went to Claudia, and right. then and went to back to Blanca, right. and it could go back to Claudia. I don't yeah. think that's ever happened in, in our, no. our city. No, no, it hasn't on there. And I think the, the big elephant in the room, you know, is the addition of somebody that most people don't think is qualified to be mayor. I think I'd, I'd be embarrassed as a Downey resident mm-hmm. of a certain councilwoman uh, was the mayor. Not because he's a woman, but because of her past and, and criminal behavior on there. I think from a community, we deserve better, especially as a mayor. So mm-hmm. if I'm on the council, I would never vote for that person to be mayor, and I'm hoping that the rest is out. But uh, but 2022, I, I think Downey will be in good hands with with uh, Blanca Pacheco and with uh, Sean Ashton. Yeah. We're going to have some experienced council members yeah. leading our city. Yeah. I feel pretty good about that. No, I was it was great. I go, well, listen, speaking of that, last week, uh, uh, Mayor Frometa hosted the 65th anniversary of the uh, the city of Downey being incorporated. You're wearing a pin mm-hmm. from that logo that they gave us there. And what was so cool, but by, by the way, our city was incorporated in 1873, excuse me, was founded in 1873 by our most famous resident, Governor John Gately Downey. Uh, he was governor of California from 1860 to 1862, uh, but our city, he founded our city in 1873. Um, then it was incorporated by the vote of the residents in 1956. So the 65th anniversary, we had a nice celebration there. But it was really cool because there was 11 former mayors. Uh, Mayor Fermetta invited us all. And it was kind of, it was a lot of fun to be mm-hmm. there, to reminisce with that. Uh, you know, they told me, by the way, I was the third Latino mayor ever mm-hmm. elected in the city. 
and I was the first foreign born mayor. So mm -hmm. it was kind of cool. Very interesting. Kinda, yeah, interesting. kind of things that I never thought about. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're now at Mayor 46. Uh, Claudia is the 46th uh, mayor of Downey, and I was the 30, uh, 36th mayor mm -hmm. of Downey. So it was real prideful. 11 former mayors and uh, reminiscing about our city. You know, it's interesting to, to think about how much Downey has changed since 1956. Yeah. You know, lo look, looking around the city, it's completely changed. But there are certain things that haven't changed. Right. And I think part of it is the spirit of generosity among yeah. our, our community. We still have several service clubs. We have yeah. residents who are generous and giving, and Downey is still a step-up community. It's right. a it's it's a city where people aspire to live. That hasn't changed yeah. since 1956. So yeah. that, that's great yeah. to see. And when you see the facts there too, we were about a hundred thousand people in 1956. We're about a hundred and fifteen thousand today. Uh, but again, we always thought we should have our own public safety. So our police department, our, our fire department, our mm -hmm. school district, those are, those are uh, you know, backgrounds and tenants of our community that we always wanted to have, mm -hmm. and we have them today. So I think we got a lot to brag about, and mm -hmm. th those are some of the reasons, but mm -hmm. our forefathers thought enough of that, so I'm, yeah. I'm proud to be part of that. Mario, Thanksgiving week yeah. here in Downey, and one of my favorite uh, traditions, I'm, I'm going to call it, is on the, the day before Thanksgiving, leading up to Thanksgiving, is driving by Portos <laughs> and seeing the lines that yeah. snake around. I think they're open at Thanksgiving Day. And seeing the people lining up for those potato balls and, you know, yeah. those pastries. The, the breads. And the breads. And it, it's amazing what Portos has done for the community of Downey. Yeah. And you were on the city council, right, when when portals came to Downey, right? So you have some insight into how portals came to Downey. Yeah. Can you talk about that? Sure, sure. I'm proud, very proud of that. That's one of the best things that I was involved with. So initially, uh, Kirk Cartosian and I, he was chairman of the, uh, the Orange Line to bring uh, the high-speed uh, technology here through Downey, which is being worked on right now in the South Rancho campus. So we were trying to get other cities to join. So uh, Kurt asked me if I'd go along and help sell Glendale on that idea. So we met with Frank Rotero, the, the Glendale mayor at the time, but we met him at Portos mm -hmm. in Glendale. So while we were sitting down talking, of course, Raul Porto comes and talks to uh, his mayor that he knows mm -hmm. and introduced myself. And I said, hey, would you be interested in coming to Downey? You know, this place is great. He says, as a matter of fact, we've been talking about it, thinking about it. But I said, please come. I'll show you around. I'll give mm -hmm. you a tour Downey. So the following week, he did exactly that. W w and, what year was this? Uh, this was uh, uh, 2000 and. Uh, ah, 2008. 2008. 2008, because they opened in November 2009, mm -hmm. uh, the beginning of 2008. Okay. So, um, and I might have to go back, it might be at the end of 2007, okay, okay? so I apologize for that. Um, anyways, so he came and toured Downey, and mm -hmm. of course, uh, as we say, the rest is kind of history. Um, but it was kind of interesting on the council because one of the things that we can look out outside my window right now and see that parking lot, uh, that development there, to make all the numbers work. And remember, they spent about $14,000 buying this corner. Mm -hmm. They're at the corner of Downey Avenue and Firestone. So one of the niches was to make it all work was the parking lot there behind. So Downey has always had a lot of redevelopment money. Mm -hmm. Never used it. Downey didn't believe in redevelopment per mm -hmm. se. So they would do a sign here, an awning there, mm -hmm. but they really didn't invest in the businesses and didn't. Mm -hmm. So it came down to us helping to build that parking. We had tons of redevelopment money that that money is just sitting there exactly for these things. Mm -hmm. Well, it came down to a two to two vote on the council. Kirk Cartosian had to uh, recuse himself. So it was Rick Trejo and myself voting for it. In favor of Portos. In Portos. favor of Portos. Mm -hmm. And Ann Baer and Dave Gaffin voted against it. And, and Ann's position was it's too much redevelopment. It was 500,000, and we had like four or five million mm -hmm. in there, right? So it was probably like 10% of what we had. Mm -hmm for too much for one business. And, mm -hmm. you know, Ken, looking back, is you got to say you're kidding me, mm -hmm. right? Anyways, and Dave was a little bit nervous about it, so he voted against it. So that didn't pass. So the following week, we made sure of taking Dave to the Burbank location mm -hmm. of Portos to see what it really is. 
And, of course, he enjoyed not only enjoyed the food, but the people, the quality of mm-hmm. the company, the Porto's family, but also what can be, how that revitalizes mm-hmm. an area, re- revitalizes an area. So I brought it back up on the council, and again, so, uh, and then we voted on it, and then it was a three to two, one vote. So Ann Baer voted against it, again, too much for, mm-hmm. for one, one business, quote unquote, those were her words. So it's kind of ironic though, a year and a half later, Jerry Brown took all the money. He just Funny. said, all the redevelopment money for all the community says, it's going to the state, you mm-hmm. have no more money. So if we hadn't done that, we not only wouldn't have got Portos, but we wouldn't have had the money either way. Mm-hmm. So, and it was ironic because when I was mayor, when we did the groundbreaking dedication, but in 2009, when they opened officially, Ann Bear was the mayor. It was just kind of funny. It's just ironic. That. It's ironic on there. But Mr. Portos, Raul Portos, uh, he was very nice and gave a lot of credit to Kirk Cartosian and myself mm-hmm. for helping make this deal. But, you know, it, it's the genesis for changing our downtown. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they averaged six or 7,000 people a day before the pandemic. A day. And then ten to 12,000 people on weekends. And when they came in downtown Downey, 18 new restaurants opened up within a quarter mile. Well, it, it's become the, the anchor for, for downtown Downey. It's yeah. become a destination place for downtown yeah. Downey. You know, be, before Portos, I don't think people traveled here to Downey specifically for the downtown. Yes. There, was, there was really no reason to come here to downtown Downey. Right. But now that we have portals, you know, we have people here who are coming specifically. They're discovering Downey. Right. They're discovering the other restaurants and the shops and the things that do in Downey. Absolutely. It's really been that anchor for this community. Yeah, yeah. And not only that, I mean, it, you know, obviously their food's great. It's it's a destination place. But the family, uh, you know, they have been, uh, Raul, Betty, and Marguerite, they have been a, a, a great corporate citizens on there. They basically have done so much for our community. They continue to. Betty's involved in everything. They give a lot of food at night that most mm-hmm. people don't know to many of the social groups and some of the service groups here in Downey to help feed the poor and those people that need it. No food goes to waste at Portos. Yeah. And, and they don't publicize it, which yeah. I think is what, what I respect the most. They yeah. don't post pictures on social media. Yeah. They don't pat themselves on the back. But they don't throw away their food. They don't. Yeah. They donate it to shelters and to to organizations that help hungry families, yeah. and they, they they should be applauded. And and I can't imagine the downtown without them. You know, we're talking about downtown. Wait, wait, one last thing on the, uh-huh. about the Portos. You know, last year when all the stimulus money was being given away and so forth, the Portos family did not take any money or Mm. didn't apply. They said, we've been saving for a rainy day. We feel that's our corporate responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying the people that took it were bad, obviously. Mm -hmm. It helped save a lot of jobs, Mm -hmm. but they didn't take any stimulus money. And I thought that was a statement to who they are. So anyways, Mm -hmm. the last thing on Portos on there. So I just Uh, Absolutely. Uh, But since we're talking about downtown, uh, you know, downtown Downey hasn't always been been this bustling destination place. I remember uh, when it was, I don't want to say dead, but it was pretty, it was pretty dead. You know, you had a couple of shops and it was very quaint. And, and, you know, I'm a proud downtown Downey resident. So I know firsthand the how the, the changes that have occurred here in, in downtown right. Downey. Have you, what's been your perspective on well, that change? Kurt- and Kurt Cartosian and I were part of the downtown subcommittee when my first year I was elected. But when you look, and I saw this recently, when you look at one of my brochures when I ran for council in 2006, mm-hmm. one of my five points that I wanted to do was to revitalize the downtown. Mm-hmm. On election night in November 2006, Kurt Cartosian, Meredith Perkins, and myself were leaving my election night party at Granada's, Granada's in downtown. Yeah. One of the few places in downtown, right? It was awesome. We're crossing Downey Avenue, and we kind of stopped in the middle of the street. Uh, it was 1030 at night or so, mm-hmm. just to give each other a hug and to say goodbye mm-hmm. and so forth. And we kept on talking. And then at the end, we laughed. We had been almost half an hour right in the middle of Downey Avenue, right smack in the middle, mm-hmm. and not one car had come by. Mm-hmm. Not one car. 
and we said, okay, this is the problem. We look back at that and we say, okay, that was the beginning, mm -hmm. if you will. Yeah. So the downtown specific plan, that was one of my top priorities. Again, I worked with the, uh, our council and the subcommittee and our staff. We had staff that we brought in then to look at economic development and change the perception of Downey in, in, in economic mm -hmm. ways. And um, the downtown specific plan actually got an award from Southern California's Agency of mm -hmm. Government, uh, SCAG, which I was a board member of. We actually uh, developed this plan to, to change things, uh, do different parking situations, the type of businesses, mm -hmm. how we're going to incentivize it, how we're going to work together, the new parking lot, mm -hmm. all these different things. And by the way, one of the things was we actually carved it out and made a little pimple over the Rees Mansion, mm -hmm. okay, because it's not just Downey Avenue. Mm -hmm. So that way we can help save it and develop Rees Mansion so it would be here for the next 100 years. But yeah, the downtown specific plan has changed. Uh, after that, it was Roger Brosmer uh, and myself were the downtown specific plan in the downtown committee. And then you know, the torch was carried forward to uh, Alex Saab and to Rick Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they added uh, all the public art that you see and made some changes on there. So at least it continues. But it's all core, the core of the downtown specific plan. And, you, you know, I think one important aspect of the growth of downtown is the housing element. We, we've added a lot of housing uh, downtown, w which I think is really important because now we have people living here who can be shopping at these restaurants and 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 eating and and spending their money here. And I know I enjoy living downtown because I could I can walk wherever I need to. I can walk to to an to an appointment to get my hair cut to to get lunch whatever it is it's all <laughs> I, I cut my I cut, I carrot my hair right <laughs> sorry um, I couldn't help that I know, I know but <laughs> but it, it's part of urban living and yeah. I think that housing component has been so uh, crucial to, to our downtown. Yeah. One thing we looked at, so we put a, a dot right in the middle of it and we made circles, 500 feet, 1,000 feet mm -hmm. around the core of the downtown and we didn't have very much housing. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, housing is not the end all to a successful downtown, but every successful downtown has a housing component. Mm -hmm. So we started that with the view. We took a lot of personal mm -hmm. grief on there. Oh my gosh, I was attacked. I was bringing slums to downtown mm -hmm. and Section 8 and all these other. It's been amazing. Mm -hmm. There's 50 some odd units there that there's a 500 person waiting list. They don't have any turnover. Mm -hmm. They take great care of it. It's a beautiful building. Mm -hmm. So the, the view has been uh, fantastic. Again, the condos that you live out that I can see out the window here, uh, you know, market price condos, mm -hmm. expensive, very nice. And there's more and more that's been developed on that. But you're right. right that's changed the downtown. Mm -hmm. We knew that. And we started it, and I think it continues to move forward. So it's a good thing. It, it, it's true, and there's there's so room for for growth. There's so more that's coming to downtown Downey, yeah. which, which, which is exciting. The transition hasn't ended yet. It's right. it's still growing. Right. And I, you know, I like I mentioned before the public art. I liked the public art statues. And art is you know subjective, so you may or may not like it. Mm -hmm. But you know, I, I, one of the proud things that Alex Saab and I did, we commissioned uh, Don Lamkin, a local mm -hmm. artist, to do that wall. And we had to get permission from Portos. They mm -hmm. own that parking lot in that wall. You're talking about um, Downey Delicious. Downey Do Delicious. It's mm -hmm. it's amazing. It's it's like and people always you know it's it's basically his version of growing mm -hmm. up. But I tell you, I can see it out my window and I. I see every day people taking pictures there so mm -hmm. that that would have been great to be able to do that same type of another mural over on firestone in paramount mm -hmm. on that corner that the city owns that is just lacks imagination and it's just kind of like Egh. so that is part of the downtown specific land that would have been really mm -hmm. good to do that i just don't think that there was a vision there so i'm not I am putting down the city on there. They should have had a little bit more vision for that. Corner. And, you know, I spoke to Don a couple of years ago, and he's open to, to yeah. doing something, whether it's there or, yeah. or somewhere else. This was a couple of years ago, but yeah. he was open to it, Great which would be fantastic. Yeah. Because, and I've seen, I think it was Southgate or Hollydale who, who also hired 
uh, you know, I shouldn't say they hired Don. I, I, I think they did. They did. But they did something very similar did that, yeah. for, for Southgate. Yeah, because over there, they could have done a mural here, again, with the same theme. It ties it into downtown on the Downey Avenue right there. What a great thing and big mm-hmm. corners. And, and you could have had other businesses. See, this Doodlicious was his vision growing up. Mm-hmm. So he added the businesses that he remembered growing mm-hmm. up. He's yeah. an artist. We yeah, commissioned him after he already did the arting, mm-hmm. the artist, uh, the art to do that. Mm-hmm. But here, in a new one, we can actually put in the things and take it as a vote mm-hmm. or whatever, have some of the businesses pay for it even, whatever, so there's no mm-hmm. public money. There's all kinds of different things. Again, it, it takes vision, okay? Mm-hmm. Without vision, the people shall perish, right? Mm-hmm. The old Proverbs thing, but anyways. So Eric, what um, So what do you want to talk about next? You know what I want to talk about? Johnny's Broiler. Ah. And it, it, it's, it, we, we, we have a connection here. Because, you know, Johnny's Broiler, iconic in, in, in the city of Downey. And I, I cover, when you got elected to the city council, that's when we really got to know each other. Mm-hmm. And I remember specifically your, your first city council meeting <laughs> because it happened right after Johnny's Broiler was illegally demolished. Yeah. And it, it's funny, so at the time I was working at the Downey Patriots and I remember... Uh, I don't remember how I found out. I think it was it was a phone call, but you know the news was Johnny was demolished, and I drove down there to the restaurant, and it it was sad. It was in shambles. It was completely destroyed, and it it was just a horrific event for for the city of Downey. And it's funny because the not funny, but the residents were rightly outraged at, at what happened, and they packed that city council meeting which happened to be your first meeting it happened to be a first meeting so johnny's broiler was illegally demolished on a sunday and and i got the call and and so forth so i was down there with the rest of of, of downy residents really upset uh what was ironic was that somebody could have died so somebody was hired and they got some workers from in front of home depot and they just had a a uh you know uh, a, bulldozer a bulldozer type thing and the, they hadn't even turned off the power they were a couple feet from mm-hmm. dying on there when the police saw this mm-hmm. and stopped it and so forth anyways but it was a landmark the googie architect and the beauty of it on there so so i was there that sunday with the outrage resident mm-hmm. so tuesday two days later was my first council meeting ever so we're in the back, I, you know, you see all the cars, you see all the news media, mm-hmm. and we're in the back in executive session, and Jerry Caden, our city manager, comes back there, and he says, that is the largest crowd we have ever had in the mm-hmm. history of the city. Mm-hmm. So this is my first council meeting. I, I didn't even know how to turn on the mic in my chair. Mm-hmm. I didn't know how to adjust my council seat, mm-hmm. you know, my first meeting. So when I went out there, and you know, you're looking at everything, the cameras are on you, and you're a little nervous, and I kind of broke the tension a little bit, but I say, gosh, my first council meeting, I am so excited that all of you are here tonight on there to wish me luck, you know, which mm-hmm. obviously they weren't, they didn't even know that. Right. But it was kind of broke the tension a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, we all, um, you know, we all pledged to rebuild it. Uh, we did that. We used some redevelopment money to do that. It was one of the best things we did. Mm-hmm. Didn't make sense from an economic standpoint. Like we used some of the money, like the Portos mm-hmm. money or so forth. Mm-hmm. And this was twice as much as Portos mm-hmm. and so forth. But we saved uh, an iconic landmark for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's still going today. The preservation of that, they literally took and left all the bricks. They left the certain tiles. All the things inside are original. Jim Louder that owns that Bob's Big Boy. Uh, great community partner mm-hmm. and preservationist from there but mm-hmm. we worked on that together there's a picture there on the back wall that shows all of us standing on the bulldozer mm-hmm. the before and after kind of right. shot so yeah it's, it's fantastic that it was rebuilt and we have it i i, I would say that I, I wish more people would support that restaurant. Yeah. When, when I go there, I'm, I'm sad to say that it's it's usually pretty empty. Yeah. And it, it's disappointing because as much as people were were clamoring to have it rebuilt, here it is. Right. Now you have to support it. Right. Go right. in there and, and eat. They have a drive through, right. and they still get these car shows. Right. And and you know, I was speaking to an employee um, last time I was there, and they mentioned that you know they have these little car meets, but nobody eats. Yeah. They you know, they park the there and they just hang out in the parking lot. Yeah. It, it's wrong. You know, support your restaurants. Yeah. Go in there. 
you know, get some breakfast and show them that we want you here right, in Downey. Right, right. Uh, uh, the next episode. Next episode. Okay, our next episode, we're going to be talking more in detail about Tesla. We're going to be talking because uh, the they almost came, and then the behind-the-scenes stories and what happened to it, and my relationship with Elon Musk. And you, you, you said, Mario, you're on record that there was a 99.9% chance that Tesla was coming to down. Absolutely. And oh, we're looking, gonna talk about back, looking back, I was right. <laughs> I really was right, and we'll tell them. We'll, we'll talk. The we'll story. talk about that. We'll talk the story on there. So we're also going to talk about uh, some of the, the kind of stores that that uh, you want, that we want here in the city, and what's going on economic development. Uh, we're finding out there's about three or four different areas in Downey that are being developed now. We'll fill you in on on what we know and how we know. Uh, we didn't do a dork of the month club uh, mm -hmm. today on there, but I'll tell you. Looking at the city council meeting last week, you were right from a couple of months ago when the mayor had to clear out the council chambers again, again, again from everybody because of the same six or seven gadflies that just refuse to behave like like normal people. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you have issues. You don't use those kind of language. You don't screaming out from your seats. You don't disrupt. I think it's against the law. So I'm mm -hmm. hoping that they they push that envelope a little bit more to get rid of some of those gadflies, but the uncivility that's going on. I'm, I'm happy that the city council is taking steps to regain control of, of their meetings. Yeah. Because it's it's past time. It's, it's happening. Yeah. We'll yeah. talk about what the ordinance they passed. We, we can will. talk about that in the next at the next meeting on there. So, Eric, anything else you want to end this meeting with? Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. This is Talking Downey with Mario. And Eric.